All right, how are we all doing today? My name is Brady Lair with Avid Max, and this is another Tying Tuesday. Thanks for clicking on the video, joining us for this tutorial. Today's fly, this is the Bareback Stonefly, another great Umpqua Feather Merchants um, available pattern for your stonefly needs, kind of an updated Pat's Rubber Legs. And we're doing sort of a skinny size today because we're using the Fly Fish Food Stonefly Chenille, the small stonefly chenille versus the standard variegated chenille. But you can do it either way. We're going to start out with our hook. This is one of the new Umqua competition hooks, the U608 uh, BL in the black nickel there. So a really cool long bend curved style, almost a scud hook, but kind of elongated which will give this bug a nice profile. So first thing we're going to do is just dress our hook with some UTC 70 in brown. And I'm going to walk all the way on back to where we're going to secure our tail, which will be the first set of the rubber leg style material. And we'll go down quite a ways on this. I nicked my thread there, so I'm actually going to fix it. You can see I kind of nicked it. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Just like you would do a dubbing loop, kind of. And then you can walk back on it and clip out that damaged section. All right, so now we got our thread hanging on the back. We're going to tie in our first material, and that's this MFC Bard Sexy Floss. And the copper black flavor is a really nice color from them. So I'm going to tie it in right on this side closest to me. And then I'll just fold it right on over and secure it down on either side there. And then we can walk our thread out of the way and go ahead and clip it to length. Lots of rubber leg in this fly. It can be a pain to deal with, but they're definitely worth it once you get the fly all said and done. Next material we're going to do before getting to the variegated stonefly chenille here is a little bit of backing material. You could use scud back, but we're going to use some thin skin today. This is a cool model color. It's the Fly Specs brown black color. And I'm going to go ahead and trim it down and create just a nice thin, even sheet here about an eighth of an inch or so in backing material. And then we'll pull it off the cardboard there so that we can tie it in right on the back. And this will be the top of our bug once we get everything else wrapped down. Get that nice and secured in place. And then we're going to add a little bit of ribbing as well. Which will be some UTC copper wire, of course, in the brassy size today for this size bug. I'm doing a size 6 right here. It's the largest that the 608 comes in. You can do a size 8, size 10 as well in this fly if you need to go bigger, of course you can, just look at some of the other scud curve style hooks that we have available. So we'll secure that on the side and then we can bring in our variegated chenille as well. And I tend to just leave this all connected, let the excess hang on down and I'm going to strip some of that cordage just so I have a nice bare cord to wrap in. Helps minimize that bulk on the back end here. And we'll lock that in place and walk up to where our legs are going to be. So just a little ways past the halfway point there. And we'll get some more of our flexi floss, sexy floss in place. So I'll do the first legs right on the rear if you can. I like these to sort of face backwards as I tie them in. And I do the same thing where I lock them in on one side, fold it over, 
and tied in the front. And I don't care too much about how they look right now because when I bring that chenille forward, that'll help me sort of adjust how they lay. Just want to get them in place. So you can do it that way where you lay it on top and then fold it over or you can also on one set of the legs you can do them right through the center and keep them on either side which can be a little bit easier too so we'll do some on this side trim them off tie it in on the far side and do the same thing And again, we'll use that chenille as we come forward to kind of get them to flare out a little bit. And then I walk right on up to the eye and I am going to go ahead and put the antenna in. So we'll grab one more strand off of the hank here and secure those in place. A little bit shorter overall. We'll do it on one side of the eye. Pull the other one over and secure that on the other side of the eye. And if you can use the eye to get them to flare out, it'll help for when you're on the river trying to thread them because this will keep it, keep the material away from the eye at that point. You won't be fighting your knot when you go to do it. And I will even give couple of wraps underneath there and then back behind and prepare to land our chenille so now we're going to rotate our chenille on forward and just try to avoid the legs as best we can on up if you have a clip to use and actually I forgot to put this in a material clip that would help or on my bobbin cradle get that out of the way if you have a clip that you can use to kind of pull this all forward and clip it on up that'll work too don't have mine with me today it makes it a little bit faster And we're using the ginger black color of the fly fish food on this one. It's a good golden stone color. I really like the coffee black as well. It's a nice darker stone fly. But there's a whole world of available colors in this small variegated stone fly chenille from fly fish food. Even purple and black, which is a cool attractor color. So once we get to that first set of legs, now we're going to be real deliberate about how our material goes up against them. We're going to use it to kind of get them to flare out. So you might run an extra wrap kind of close up next to them. And then when you jump in front of them, separating them a little bit. And kind of laying back down on them. and just manipulating stuff as you go. Making sure not to trap them, of course. This one I keep is kind of a lighter pattern, so I don't lead wrap it. I like it to be a, a thin profile bug, but you could do lead wraps underneath this as well if you needed it to be heavier. And kind of work it out in your Euro rig or under an indicator where you want to avoid using some split shot, all that good stuff. And that chenille helps to kind of get those legs to look nice and buggy. All right, now that we're up at the front here, we're going to capture it off. And then we'll get those other materials up and out of the way. So a few solid wraps behind, a couple in front, and we can clip it out. Still got our bundle of material. 
Good to go. So now we'll bring our backing on up and over. Just right over the top. And secure that in place with the thread. Behind our hook eye there. Again, just trying not to trap anything. Couple on top, couple behind. And then we'll clip out that excess. I cut this backing a little bit thick so it's kind of bubbling, but as we bring our wire up, we can sort of get it to lay down. As you come up on this, you may need to sort of wrap it down flat so that it stays around so that it doesn't bubble up on you any worse. But we'll counter wrap our wire right over top of everything. And nice and snug, you can really bite into that thin skin and get that segmentation on the top half of the fly. And then also use the wire as a last stitch effort to position your legs if they're not behaving. Really locks everything in place. Gives you a nice durable fly that'll catch fish one after the other for you without falling apart. And our wire up on the front, capture it off. Make sure that's not gonna come loose on us. Always fighting the legs. And then we can spin it out. And give the fly a final whip finish. Cool little stonefly bug. Best fished through the summertime when you got stonefly activity when they're crawling around, trying to find the banks, getting ready for their hatch but it can definitely be fished year round because they're always in the river system. So just because they're not active doesn't mean one won't get kicked loose in flows and fish will be happy to eat them if they see them coming by. So pretty close to done there. I do also like to take my legs and clip them to length. So I'll get my antenna out of the way. And actually I like my antenna a little shorter so I'm gonna clip those shorter. And then I'll take the legs and get them all to go straight upward. Just like so, and we'll clip them all the size. Just like that. There's the bareback stonefly. A nice little juicy bug that trout definitely love.